Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Blender Rigid Body Physics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up Rigid Body Physics inside of Blender and then baking them so we can use them in an animation. However, you should find some of this information useful if you plan to use the Blender game engine. Okay, before we get started, um, check the description for the blend file as well as any other information about the video. Okay, so let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to switch it over to the Blender game engine. So up here we see Blender Renderer. Left click and then select Blender game. All right, now you'll notice all, all of our panels have changed to suit the Blender game engine. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to create a plane and then scale it and we'll use this for our ground. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a stack of cubes and then roll a sphere or a ball down and then knock them over. All right, so hit space and then type add plane. Alternatively, you can go over here, add mesh plane. All right, now we're gonna scale this up 10 blender units. So hit S and then type 10. All right, now we are going to, with our plane selected, we're gonna go over to our physics panel and we're gonna give it some collision bounds. All right, now we want to right click our cube for our physics type for our cube. Obviously we don't want it to be static because we want our ball to knock it over. So we want our type to be rigid body and we'll give it a collision balance of box and we'll just leave all everything else at default. You can adjust the mass if you'd like to make it heavier. You can adjust the radius the radius is the size of the collision box, so we're going to leave that at one, so it fits our mesh perfectly. And we'll talk about everything else in a, another upcoming tutorial. All right, so I'm going to move this up one on the Z axis, and then I'm going to move it back a few units. All right, just move back a few more. Okay. So now, what we want to do is we want to duplicate it a few times. So hit Shift E to duplicate and then just do that one more time to create three cubes all of the same properties and then duplicate and stack them up and then I'm going to hit S to go to our top view uh, no actually I think that'll be good alright so now we need to create a, a ramp for our ball to roll down so let's create another plane, so space, and that plane's already been used, so hit enter. And then S, and on the x-axis we want to scale it 5, and on the y-axis we want to scale it 3. Let's move this back some, and I'm going to hit 1 to go to the front. I'm just going to move this up over here, all right. And now I'm going to set it to negative 25 on the Y. There we go. It should give us a nice ramp. All right. Collision bounds and make sure physics type is static. All right. So now we need a ball. So we're going to use a UV sphere. So space, add, UV sphere. All right. I'm going to set the shading to smooth. Make it look a little bit nicer. And I'm going to set this up above our ramp just a little bit. Physics type, rigid body, collision, and we're going to use a sphere. All right. So if we were to hit P right now, which would launch the game engine, our ball would roll down and it'll hit our cubes and stop. All right, so hit escape to get out of the Blender game engine. All right. Now to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to go to onto viewport and I'm going to set it to textured and I have it set to GLSL mode. Um, by default it's set to multi texture. However, if you hit N and then go to display and then shading, you could change it to however you like. I'm going to leave it at GLSL. All right, move my light back and up some. All right, now I'll select our wall again. I'm going to set mass to 50 and then hit P and now it should roll down a slight bit faster and should not clear through. All right. 
and I'm going to set the radius to uh, let's try 1.2. There we go. That's a little bit better, but actually I'll just put it at 1.1. 1 .1. All right. Now, uh, there are a few things you can do. If you go over to game, you can turn on frame rate and the profiler, which will give you some detailed statistical information. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to turn on frame visualization which will draw bounding boxes and everything else, and it's quite useful for debugging physics. All right. So, with those two things in mind, I'm going to turn off the frame rate profiler and the physics visualization. All right. Now go over to our world panel. Now, for considering we're baking our physics in, um, I'm going to increase the quality a little bit. Not that in this scene it will really make too much of a difference. You could leave everything at default and it probably wouldn't change much. However, I'm going to set FPS to 25 since inside of Blender, by default, every frame equals, sorry, not every frame, every uh, second will equal 24 frames. However, we're going to adjust that to 25. All right, I'm going to lower the physics steps to one and increase the sub steps to five. As well, if you'd like to increase the quality and precision, you can increase the occlusion calling, but I'm just going to leave that at 128 and I'll leave logic steps alone. All right, so now if we hit P, our ball just rolls right on across, it does the same as before. But now, how do we bake this as an animation? We go over here to game and we select record animation and now when we hit P it will record at 25 FPS our physics alright so that should be enough so let's hit escape and then down here at the bottom you don't see anything yet however if you click play or alt A you should see it and now we're playing back our physics okay so we have, we actually recorded 280, but we're only going to use 250. All right. So now that we've finished up that, let's go ahead and set it up to be rendered. Let's go back to the Blender Renderer. Let's go see Renderer panel, frame rate. We'll set it to 25. And you can adjust all this however you'd like. Um, but that concludes this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask, and please ask them on the forum as well. Check the video description for a link as well. Uh, I have an IRC now. Check the video description, which will also link you to a forum topic, which will cover how to get on. If you don't know how to as well, it'll also give you the IRC info, and you can ask questions there. I'm generally there pretty much 24-7. So... Feel free to stop by and say hello. Sorry, say hello. All right. Thank you.